الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما برهبة فلا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulisu wa makru. May Allah rectify our condition and affairs and that of the Muslims everywhere. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. This is the sixth sitting in how to avoid sins. You know, some practical steps from the book in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. the fourth way to escape sins is reflecting over the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fourth way to escape sins is to be conscious of the anger and the recompense of Allah Azza wa Jal since Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is angered by those who disobey Him and He is displeased with those who do things that He has prohibited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says which means in Kitab al-Kareem so when they angered us we punished them and drowned them all. So Allah Azza wa Jal becomes angry, displeased, and punishes. This should be remembered whenever a person's soul incites him to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should know that the anger of Allah and his punishment cannot be repelled by anything. So what about this weak servant? So the fact that we're weak, we're ajiz. We, sh- we have to know and reflect and understand that we cannot repel the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we're defenseless if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to descend His punishment upon us for all of the acts of disobedience we do day and night. So if we reflect on that, that can be a means to keep you away from doing disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you truly understand and believe in His punishment, then that alone can help you repel evil and indulging in sins. And there are so many examples. For example, the Prophet ﷺ mentions the example of those who make tawassal. They, make, uh, they seek to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through good deeds. And one of the good deeds that was mentioned in a hadith that was speaking about three that got locked in the cave, you know, a, a huge boulder fell in front of a cave, and they were unable to escape. So they were able to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mention the good deeds that they did for his sake. And one of the individuals said, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, I had the opportunity, a beautiful uh, young uh, virgin was at my disposal where I could enjoy her up to the to the extent that he was going to have relations with her akramakum Allah and then she said you know don't open the door without the key or something similar to this and she was saying and she said you know fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he refrained from committing zina when he was that close to doing it he refrained for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that reason, this boulder uh, began to move from the entrance of the cave. That was the source of their salvation because they made tawassal with their good deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And he, Azza wa Jal, caused the boulder to move for each one of them until it moved enough for them all to escape. So that shows us the importance of doing good and refraining from evil. And refraining from evil, especially for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you're afraid of the punishment of Allah azza wa jal. Lastly, a habatifillah, that shows us that being cognizant of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that can help instill taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because taqwa Allah is to adhere to the commandments of Allah and avoid His prohibitions. 
So when you reflect upon the sins that you do, and you reflect upon the punishment that you are deserving of, then that can be a deterrent for you to commit more sins. That can be a deterrent, deterring you from doing more ma'asi, more, more wickedness, because you're afraid of the punishment of Allah. You know Allah punishes. You know that Allah is the most merciful, but He's also shadid al iqab He's also the most severe in torment. When, when He is giving you every opportunity to come back to Him, to repent, to leave shirk and kufr and ma'asi, and He's giving you those opportunities, and you choose to ignore that or to be arrogant, then destruction is the result. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulisu wa makru. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And until our next sitting.